No, my kids are the, are the best, but, <laughs> but they're kids, you know, and we're kids, and God knows that we're going to do that stuff, but as we mature in our faith, it's really good when we can do what the Lord tells us to do, the way he tells us to do it, when he tells us to do it, you know, and that's a very mature thing to, to do, and, and Elijah clearly mature in the Lord, so uh, he went and did according to he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. You know, he knew that was going to happen, and that's what happened. God didn't magically make the brook keep coming there. Uh, the ravens was a pretty cool thing. But the, the brook dried up. So what do you do? What are you going to do, right? So he waited on the Lord, and the Lord told him, and he trusted God, right? So, so when our horizontal actions, you know, the energy that we use uh, for expressing our love for God, His way, connect with God vertically in prayer and worship, loving Him with our heart and soul and mind, then, then understand that there's a fusion that happens there. You see, God, what God's doing to Elijah. You know, you probably get your head chopped off, but I want you to go and tell Ahab this bad news. So he goes. Well, you, you know, you're going to probably die of thirst and starvation, but go to this brook. So he goes. It, it, it's very uh, hot where vertical and horizontal connect. It's a very, it's a very hot place uh, sometimes. And, and so where God shows up, the kingdom of heaven shows up. We know that. Look, Jesus' message. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, has come near. It's not will come. Uh, you don't, it's not. Repent. So you get to go there when you die. No, it has come near. Vertical meets horizontal. Wow. So kingdom stuff does happen. And Elijah knows that whether he lives or dies is to repeat. Uh, God knows what, that what he can't see. And if he does it God's way, it's going to be God's way. Okay. So let's look at this one. Right? Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath. All right. Boy, we'll talk about that in a second. Which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Please bring me a little water and a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus the Lord God of Israel, says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil be <coughs> dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. So there's a lot of stuff that happens there. But the first thing is, God sends Elijah to this place called Zarephath in, in Sidon. Jezebel, the worst nightmare of a human being ever, uh, is from Sidon. That's where she's from. So God sent Elijah to her country and not just to her country where everybody would be looking for him, but to this place Zarephath. And Zarephath was a place where they basically it was a foundry. And a, they, Zarephath actually means the smelting place. And so what did they make? They made iron. This, this place provided the 
war machine of Sidon with its raw, its raw materials. He basically sent Elijah right into the fire itself. I mean literally, into the foundry, into the smoking place. All right? So here you go, Elijah. It's, it's not, you know, it's not bad enough that I sent you to a brook that's going to dry up so you can be fed by birds. And now I want you to go to Jezebel's city, uh, country, to the city that provides her with all her weaponry. And uh, I'm going to get, you know, provide for you by a widow who doesn't have any food. All right. I mean, there are a lot of human options there. I don't know many people who would say, okay. um, but he did, and he goes. And so, let's talk about, let's talk about smoking. Go to the next slide here. Here he goes to this place, and uh, it's crazy, but it's the smoking place. I don't think there's any coincidence that the city that God sent Elijah to is the smelting place. That's what Zarephath means. So let's look at what it means to smelt something. So first you've got to get your iron ore. Uh, uh, it's rock, uh, like a rocky conglomerate, right? With the, the iron veined in through it there. And then you got, this is, you know, i got modern pictures, but these guys basically had clubs and hammers, uh, raw, you know, forms of hammers. And they basically had to pulverize the stuff until it was the size of little kernels of corn. Nowadays, we can get it, you know, just like dust, but it, they had to pulverize it until it was little kernels of corn. And then you go to the next thing. And then they got to get a fire hot enough to melt ore into liquid, basically, right? So, you, you know, you got dudes that are shoveling. I mean, think about the, 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 co the, the cost of life that it takes to get a foundry that hot in those days. Just saying, okay? And then you gotta have this stuff called flux. So not only are they mining for iron ore, they gotta mine for uh, limestone. We still use some, some limestone in, in uh, flux, but that was flux, and so they mine this stuff out and again pulverize it, and then they'd have to throw the flux in with the iron ore into the this big, you know, hot, 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 hot fire uh, that they would have made maybe in a carved out rock or in, uh, it, I've even seen uh, drawings and stuff of, of where they had a tree stump, you know. So somehow they got it hotter in, uh, hot enough inside of a tree stump to melt ore, you know, that's crazy. But that's what they did. And so that's a more of a modern foundry. And so when, when you get all this stuff mixed together and you're blowing air through it and stuff, what happens then is the flux melts and flux and iron Flux and iron, not the ore, but the iron, are like oil and water, okay? So when they mix together, the flux covers the iron, the ore sloughs off and bobs up, okay? And you can get rid of the trash, which turns into the, like coal, essentially, coke or coal. And then you've got this nice gooey uh, uh, iron, uh, and the flux covers it and coats it, actually protects it from rusting. They'll scoop the stuff out, um, and then what happens is the flux runs off like water, and then you pour the iron into your little uh, mold, and they, in Zarephath, they just made ingots. Ingots, 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 so that you could take them to a blacksmith and he could shh, 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 and make war arrowheads and swords and daggers and all that, shield, shield frames, all that kind of stuff. And so you'd get, uh, you'd get your, your iron. So that's where God sent Elijah, okay? Tough people who live in a tough place to make uh, things for war. That's where, that's where God sent Elijah, okay? And so what God has done then is he's telling, oh, oh I'm sorry, and then the iron, wait, go back. <laughs> go back. <laughs> iron can be molded and shaped into something powerful and unbreakable. And uh, just saying that in the wrong hands, this can be the world's deadliest weapon. <laughs> Especially if you've ever seen me cook uh, a cast iron. Wow. Okay, so, but uh, he sends Elijah right there into the, the hottest of all possible places 
And uh, what do you think happens to a patient? Yeah. Is everything all better? He meets this, uh, this widow, and she didn't have any food, but God performs a miracle, and he's got the food, so everything's fine now, right? What happens is time after time after time, Elijah's being poured into the foundry, and the slough is being separated from him, so that every time when you think, oh, it's finally over, right? You know, hunky dory, I get to, I, you know, be in the happy place now. But sometimes the happy place isn't where we need to be. Sometimes if we, our satisfaction lies in knowing that God's will is done. And that was Elijah's life because here's what happens next. Just when you think things should be okay, this is what happens. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. In other words, he died. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to, bring it to, to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? In other words, she blames Elijah for this because she helped the guy who was the prophet of the God of Israel. And she said, thought maybe her, you know, Jezebel's demons or gods were doing this to her son because Elijah was there. So she's blaming him for her son getting sick. And she's basically telling him to get lost. And so the human thing to do would be go, I'm really sorry that this happened to you. I feel terrible. You want me to leave? I'll leave. It's the right thing to do, right? But that's not what God said. So Elijah has to do what God said. He can't do what he wants to do. He can't do what he thinks is, you know, the right thing to do. He has to do what God says to do. And so Elijah is supposed to stay with this woman. And he says, give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. And then he cried out to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? You can see that he is in the fire. This man is in the hot place. He is desperate. But he's, he's even in his desperation, even in the heat of that situation, he does not give up on God's word to him. And so he does this. He stretched himself out on the child three times. Flux on iron. I'm just saying, this is flux on iron. Three times. And cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Now, God spared him. Gave him the brook, gave him the ravens, gave him the widow, gave him the meal, gave him the oil. Now, he cries out to the Lord the first time, and nothing happens. You, you can't pass up that he did this three times. Okay? You with me? We read it really fast. But let's not forget what really happened. He had to do this three times. Guy who's used to getting what he wants from God when he asks. He had to do this three times. The first time, you think, oh, maybe one more time. The second time, you think, oh, maybe this ain't going to happen. Maybe I should just give up. 